Preventative Medical Wholeness As the old saying goes, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. This was true yesterday, it's true today, and you can bet it's going to be true long into the future. Why spend a tremendous amount of time, effort, and resources dealing with problems that you could have avoided in the first place? This makes all the sense in the world. This is not rocket science. If you want to achieve optimal wellness, a significant chunk of this has to be preventative in nature. By being proactive in how you live your life and setting up a proper wholeness program that you can stick to because it reflects certain key aspects of your present life, you can avoid serious illness later on. Here are just some ideas that you might want to explore. Keep in mind that everybody's different. Some of this might be a little bit more difficult for you. Some of this might even seem downright unacceptable. All I'm asking is that you keep an open mind. The more open your mind is, the greater the progress you will achieve. If anything, you should mix and match these. Try them out. Stick with them long enough until you can decide that this is sustainable or it's just out of the question and you're going to be looking for an alternative. Whatever the case may be, go through these so you can at least figure out how they work and how they can impact you in a positive way. Don't just dismiss them out of hand. I know it's very tempting because a lot of these may seem uncomfortable and inconvenient. I understand that. It was rough for me at first, but when I went through these steps, they slowly became more automatic. Eventually, they became part of who I am, and this led to weight loss, better states of mind, greater personal effectiveness, and a higher level of personal happiness and contentment. Again, your whole persona is like a balloon. If you work on one part of that balloon, don't be surprised if it has an impact on the rest of your system. It doesn't really matter where you press on the balloon. What's important is that you are making the effort to change your current lifestyle. There are many ways to approach this. Proper nutrition. By simply increasing the amount of high-fiber foods that you eat, as well as fruits and vegetables, you can actually increase your lifespan by up to a full decade. This is not conjecture. This is not a theory. Recent studies have actually borne this out. Of course, this is part of a larger context of other habits you need to pick up, like quitting smoking, drinking less alcohol, and exercising. Still, proper nutrition goes a long way. You might want to increase the amount of plant-based meals that you have in the course of a week. You can also eat more whole foods. In other words, try to eat raw foods or less processed items. Now, you don't have to do this all in one sitting. This doesn't have to happen overnight. You can start low and slow. Regardless, when you start doing this, you start getting used to it. Again, look for high fiber, low salt, low fat, and starch-based foods. When you're eating starch, try to step away from highly processed starch like pasta, highly refined sugar and flour, as well as well-polished rice. Instead, look for starch in its natural state. The rule of thumb I follow is that the more color starch has, the healthier it is for me. So you might want to do that. It also increases the likelihood that starch, in its natural context, would have more fiber for you to enjoy. Learn to say no. Another bit of preventative advice that pays off tremendously for people, regardless of their backgrounds, is the ability to say no. A little bit of self-control can go a long way. I am, of course, talking about drugs. This includes recreational drugs as well as pharmaceutical medication. If there are more natural alternatives or lower impact pharmaceutical options, make sure you ask your doctor. Always ask for a healthier and more natural alternative. You don't necessarily have to always grab the most chemical-based and synthetic medical option. Learning to say no also involves turning your back on tobacco and harder forms of alcohol. Maybe you can have a glass of wine every once in a while, but the more you turn away from alcohol, the better off you would be. Please understand that when compared to marijuana, alcohol is actually more dangerous to you. It leads to more fights and lack of self-control. Also, since it is legal, it leads to more accidents. I'm not advocating marijuana use in any way, shape, or form. I'm just framing alcohol in its proper context. It may be legal, but it packs quite a bit of baggage. You might also want to consider toning down caffeine. Now, a lot of people are addicted to caffeine the first thing in the morning. I understand that. I get that. But you might want to reduce your coffee intake to maybe one cup a day. Please understand that according to research studies, the effectiveness of caffeine to jumpstart your day or take you to higher levels of productivity actually hits a wall. There is a certain amount of caffeine that you can take which would have a positive effect on your productivity. After that, you hit the point of diminishing returns. A little bit past that point, and then there's really no returns at all. Instead, you just get all the negatives of caffeine intake like jitters, nervousness, and possibly even physical tremors. You might also want to look into replacing sugar in your daily food intake. This is going to be very hard because it's very easy to get addicted to sugar in its many different forms. 
This is especially true in the United States, where almost everything has high fructose corn syrup in it. It's easy to see why HFCS is so popular in the U.S., because there are many states that produce a tremendous amount of corn. When this corn is processed to release its sugar in the form of HFCS, this corn becomes more commercially valuable. You can use the cornmeal and make money off of that. You can use it to feed livestock. And you can, of course, sell the syrup. Not surprisingly, it's all over the place in the U.S. It's just too abundant and all sorts of products contain HFCS. The problem is, your body breaks down HFCS into sugar. Sugar can cause havoc with your system. It is highly inflammatory. It leads to constant hunger, which causes havoc with your insulin patterns. There are also all sorts of behavioral issues that you can suffer from due to the peaks and crashes of your blood sugar level. As much as possible, try to start toning down on your carbohydrate intake. In fact, according to recent research, high-fat, low-carb diets are actually more conducive to sustainable weight loss as well as a healthier overall lifestyle due to its anti-inflammatory effect. You might also want to tone down any kind of synthetic inputs that you have. Any contact you have with anything synthetic instead of natural, you might want to be more suspicious of. This applies to clothing as well as the stuff you have around the house. I know this is not always practical. It might set you back a few bucks, but you might want to start walking towards that direction because anything synthetic can have chemical residues. I'm not just talking about the possibility of lead paint here, although that is kind of an outlier. Instead, I'm talking broadly in terms of anything synthetic. This is not just restricted to paint or composites. As long as it has a way of getting into your body, you might want to be a little bit more wary of it. Adopt proper exercise. You know your personal routine better than anybody else. I'm not going to sit here and dictate to you that you're going to have to run a 10K every single day, but you have to step up your daily level of physical activities. Now, the good news here is that you don't have to be a hero to do this. You can choose to do it in a very passive way. For example, if you normally park right next to the main entrance of your office, you might want to consider parking farther and farther away. Maybe on week one, you would park 20 feet away, and then the following week, you might want to park 50 feet away, and so on and so forth, until you park really really far away. What this does is that you push yourself to passively exercise more because every step you take burns more calories. It pumps more blood. It makes you breathe more. And the best part to all of this is that you're not obviously working out. You're not obviously at the gym punishing yourself physically. So you're more likely to do this on a more consistent and sustainable level. The same applies to carrying bags. If you leave a lot of stuff in the office because you don't want to lug it around, you might want to rethink that. You might want to make it a point to carry heavier stuff as you walk back and forth from the office. Now, in the beginning, it is probably going to be a little bit intrusive. It might even seem unnecessarily inconvenient, but that's the point. When you're feeling inconvenienced, it means that you are physically exerting yourself more. This is an important part of your evolution from a more or less sedentary lifestyle to a more active one. The key here is to make the active component of your daily activities seem as passive and automatic as possible. If it's just part of your daily routine, you don't even think about it. It doesn't threaten you. It doesn't seem like a hassle after a while. It's just something that you do day after day. Of course, the big challenge here is how to get to that point. This is why I suggest that you don't force yourself to be a hero. Slow and low is good enough. As long as you're consistent and you ramp up your physical effort, this is good enough. At first, it may be inconvenient, but eventually you get used to it. Then you challenge yourself more by parking farther, carrying more weight, walking more stairs until you reach an optimal level. Get enough rest, do yourself a big favor, and try not to work seven days a week. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, you're already resting. You may be thinking that you already have Saturdays and Sundays off. Well, you might want to think again, because if you spend a lot of time worrying about work or thinking about stuff at the office, you're not really resting. Again, keep in mind that this training focuses on you as a whole being. Your mental faculties form a crucial part of your total being. If you're constantly mentally engaged by the stuff that you have to do at work, this is going to put some pressure on you. This is going to haunt you at some level or another. Accordingly, it's crucial that you commit to a day of total rest. This is a day where you will not play video games, think about work, or engage in any kind of activity that works you up or stresses you out. Instead, this is a day when you're just going to read recreationally, enjoy nature scenes, or listen to inspirational messages or soothing music. This is not as easy as you think. A lot of people have a tough time slowing down. They assume that they always have to be doing something. They assume that they always have to be thinking at a certain speed. Determine your day of rest and commit to it. Again, you can start low and slow. Maybe you can say that on a certain day, one hour would be complete and total rest. 
Once you get used to that, try to scale it up to two hours, then three hours. Eventually, try to reach the stage where the whole day is pretty much sealed off. If you keep this up for a long enough period of time, you will eventually get there. The key here is total relaxation. The complete you must be relaxed. You must be relaxed on the types of food you eat, the music or sounds you listen to, the things you think about, the people you surround yourself with, as well as your physical environment. You have to look around you and nothing must stress you out. The clothing you wear must set you at ease. Everything about your total being from the perspective of your five senses must lead to relaxation. The power of balance. With all the above said, try to balance your preventative medical wholeness program with everything else going on in your life. You can't just stop everything to adopt the initiatives I described above. While it's a good idea to absolutely stop drugs, tobacco, and alcohol, for everything else, you might want to break yourself in. You might want to take a more gradual approach. Usually, strict overnight changes are easily reversible. You have to understand that the human persona and the total human person springs back into shape because of fixed patterns that you have grown accustomed to over the years. And if you adopt a totally new way of living, your old habits actually start undermining you. It's just too new, too foreign, too alien. Don't do that. You might want to gradually make the change. But as I said earlier, when it comes to certain things like drugs, tobacco, and alcohol, going cold turkey might be the better way to go. Always look for a sort of balance as you try to break into your shift into a preventative medical wholeness lifestyle. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.